ahead. Hi, my name is Zara Mohammed. I'm a first year undergraduate here at UCSD, and I've produced a biofilter that's grown using a specialized source bacteria. Now, because of this production method, I've minimized costs. I can make a filter more than a meter across for less than a cent. In addition, lab tests indicate that there's a 0.8 micron filter pore size, and that means it's capable of removing 100% of bacteria from water. Compare that to the current market, $4 for a three micron pore filter, less than an inch across. So who needs such a low cost, high volume bacterial filter? Well, the water treatment industry, these are the guys that supply your tap water and handle your wastewater across the nation, are actively seeking solutions to their filtration needs. There are 90 such plants in California, a split into nine districts across the state, and one plant alone spends $74 million annually on water treatment. This is because they use the current high cost methods of water filtration. See, in addition to those filters I already mentioned, centrifuging is another very common method to use. But a centrifuge costs more than $2,000 per unit, and you need a small army of them to have an industrial scale operation move smoothly. UV radiation has a similar shortcoming, and they cost more than $8,000 per unit. A plant in the East Bay area called Zone 7 Water has already contacted me last year about using my products in their lab and starting trials to replace the expensive products they currently use. Once we have our development complete, integration of our product into that lab, into that plant, excuse me, is very straightforward. Now, in these regions in California, all these plants are literally connected by a series of pipes and tubes. Since they have to share a lot of their systems, it's very easy for us to roll out our filter into all of their, all of the different plants. From there, you move to the California Water Agency, come back down into the pilot plants in the remaining eight regions, and repeat the same process. From there, once the product is uh, standard in California, you jump through the overall government umbrella, come back down into pilot plants across the nation, and we've established a new market standard product. All right, thank you, Zara. <laughs> so, why start in California? Is it just because we're here? Are there, are there other more de developing economies where you could sort of get in on plants being built that are probably would like to save cost versus revamping existing plants? Um, I've already had connections with uh, a specific plant in San Francisco or in the, in the Bay Area, and they're the ones that are interested in, in starting with us. And since we already have a foot in the door, you might as well follow that lead. And give me a sense, and perhaps uh, forgive me if you did, uh, and I missed it, of the cost differential of, of what it would be for them to install a conventional f filter versus using your technology. Sure. So the fil filters right now that are bacterial filters, uh, and these, one, these ones aren't actually used in... Uh, um, plants because you can only make them so small because they're so expensive. Um, they're four dollars for less than an inch, um, whereas I have less than a cent for more than a meter. Um, the water treatment industries use a very redundant system of multiple filter layers and UV radiation. It all leads to high costs for the products themselves and high maintenance costs. And so, and this is uh, this is biologically grown, but the material itself is is inert or? The material itself is, uh, does not contain any biological agents. It's not uh, alive. Uh, but it contains the waste products of the specialized bacteria. It's a very long, natural, durable polymer that weaves itself together after it's secreted from my special source bacteria. And, and what scale are you at right now in terms of how much can, you know, what size and, and how much can you produce? For, in terms of the amount I can produce, I can produce um, uh, as much as I need to because it costs so little to produce. All I need to do is feed my bacterial culture, minimal nutrients, and they make the filter. Um, you had another scaling question. I apologize. Oh, well, just, I mean, does it have to be done at the plant, or this is something you do at, like, your factory, if you will, and then it can do be... Do at the factory. Okay. Yeah. How much money do you need to get your company off the ground? Uh, currently, that's something that I don't know. Um, the, I mean, whatever you can give me would be great. <laughs> um, well, how much would you need to, let's say, build everything you need to sell to the guys in San Francisco? Because I'm sure they're asking you for a large volume. Right. Now, uh, the costs are all associated are going to be with, of course, the, the starting of the company, you know, the legal stuff. Exactly. And then, and then the equipment as well. Now, all these things combined uh, is a figure that I haven't had a complete experience with because all the plans are still tentative. Um, we're still learning about um, the possible ways we can go through different tracks and... Uh, what kind of equipment we can use. What's your idea of what you can sell it for? Like, what, now, and what kind of profit margins are you looking for? Because it's so low cost, any price we do sell it at has a massive margin of profit. 
And the price point specifically is something that we're researching currently. We're seeing what kind of other products we have on the market and what we can afford in terms of... Are you uh, doing this by yourself or is anybody else doing it with you? I have a team that's small but growing. I'm a research partner. She's an engineer. All right, thank you, Zer. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to cut you out. Thank you.